Well, holy the dongos! Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Do Rags here, and welcome to another episode of Episode Rundown, where I, Shady Do Rags, run down the episodes of Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. And today we're looking at Season 2, Episode 10, The Zappities. And yeah, I know a lot of you were waiting for me to get to this episode. Some serious things happened in this episode. Uh, but you might be surprised about what I have to say about it. The episode starts off with uh, Marinette and Alia chilling at Alia's house. Alia has to babysit her sisters, and Marinette is there. I don't know if she's helping Alia, or if she's just there just to have a slumber party. But while Alia's sisters sleep, uh, they're going to have a slumber party. And then the next day, they're supposed to be going to a, a carnival, I think it is, or a theme park, something like that. They're going to something the next day. Uh, this part I really like. There's a lot of good character moments in this part. And just Alia and Marinette interacting with each other, I, th I think they make a decent foil. Um, I've said before that I don't think Marinette and, uh, or not Marinette, Ladybug and Cat Noir are decent foils. But I do think Marinette and Alia foil each other pretty well in certain circumstances. And uh, there was just a lot of good... I want to say interaction in this part. I like seeing how I also like seeing how Alia handled her um, her sisters. Alia, they've they've discerned that Alia is very good with kids. Like they've backed that up with so many scenes. This is no exception. Um, I like how she was playful with them at first. She put them in the bed, and as time went on, she gave them more and more warnings. And then she was firm with it. She said, "If you you do something one more time, we're not going to the amusement park tomorrow." And then they did something one more time, and so she punished them. I, I like that. But Alia and Marinette, they have a discussion. You know, Alia's doing her usual thing, geeking out about Ladybug, and she's saying she wants to reveal her. And Marinette justifiably gets angry. You know, she says, don't you think Ladybug has a reason to keep her identity secret? And here's the part where I start getting mixed emotions. <laughs> because Alia responds with what I've been saying the whole time. She says, well... She there there are certain people she should tell. Say, for example, if you were Ladybug Marinette, I could cover for you. I could make excuses for why you miss class, such and such. And that that is something I have brought up over and over. Like certain people should know who Marinette is based on the story that we're given. Um, like I've said before, it it depends on the story you're given. And from what they've shown so far, it would benefit Marinette if more people knew who she was. Because they could help her in certain situations. And Marinette, I forget what her argument was, but Marinette wasn't having it. Um, and there was actually a little a little play on joke where Marinette's like, well, I guess I just have to ask, are you Ladybug, Alia? Like, I like that little joke. Um, it, it did make me laugh, but I saw the, I, I felt that it was, its attempt at humor was very successful. Alia, like I said, her, her little sisters keep getting up and they keep blaming these imaginary creatures called the Zappities. And instead of saying, I did it, they'll say, it, it's not us, it's the Zappities, you know. This is a common thing that I've seen little kids do. Um, well, not real little kids. I've seen it in shows. It's a cliche among shows where little kids will blame something that's not there. That's why a lot of shows you have where there actually is something there and the adult doesn't believe them. But yeah, they do that and Alia finally gets to a point where she says, okay, we're not going to the theme park tomorrow because you guys can't behave. Um, again, good on Alia. She's a, she's very good at, uh, at handling kids. This gets the kids upset and Hawk Moth targets them. And I do got to say, Hawk Moth targeting little kids, I still think it's just, I think it makes his character look a little bit like you can't take it seriously. Um, and it also, it leaves your head scratching because kids throw tantrums all the time. Like, Hawk Moth should be targeting a new victim, like, every hour, <laughs> if that's the case. Um, but he decides to target these two. They are twins, by the way, and they do say the exact same thing. That's not how twins work, but whatever, I can suspend my disbelief. Um, and Hawk Moth targets them. And this is part that I found was weird. They were fighting over a hat. They had two of them, but they were fighting over the one. And... <laughs> And they did that so that they would both be touching the same item when they became akumatized. Uh, I was later able to suspend my disbelief because I've actually, personally, I've done that. If you give me something and you give somebody else the exact same thing, 
I'm not gonna want theirs. I'm gonna want mine. I'm gonna say this one's mine. Don't forget. I might even like write my name on it or something. So I do kind of. I was able to suspend my disbelief on that. Uh, so they become the Zapodies, Um and the Zapodies are they can when they eat they multiply. It's basically they're they're referencing gremlins. Uh, when they eat they multiply, and um, they manage to eat and multiply. They manage to get out the get out the apartment. Uh, Ladybug, of course, comes. Marinette turns into Ladybug, and Cat Noir or Adrian he sees it on the news and he turns it. He turns into Cat Noir, and because they are multiplying, Ladybug and Cat Noir they have to destroy the original hat. They tried destroying hats, but it doesn't work um, because they have to destroy the original. So they they fight these things and they're doing a decent job, but then they get overwhelmed because they can multiply faster than they can take them out. Uh, so Marinette dis. Uh, I am not doing a good job with referring to their superhero and civilian names. Ladybug uh, does her lucky charm, and it gives her a teapot. And she's like, huh, I've seen this somewhere. And she's like, oh, I know what I have to do. And she asks Cat Noir to just take care of things while she's gone. She decides to keep it a secret. Okay, this this is my huge problem with this episode. This entire episode is about secret identities and why they're necessary. They tell you, they just tell you why secret identities are necessary, but they show you the opposite. They show you the complete opposite. Marinette goes to talk to the old man. Um, I can never remember his name. I just call him the turtle guy, but she goes to talk to him and I'm, I'm like, why didn't you tell Cat Noir about him? And this, the thing they keep drilling into your head is it would be bad if anybody else knew your secret identity. Marinette and the turtle guy know each other's secret identity. And it's because of that they can help each other. The old guy is, the old guy has a solution. He says you should, he, he pulls out the, uh, the, the fox miraculous and he says you can get somebody to help you. Which by the way, I said in my review, there are seven Miraculouses in total, because that's what I was shown. They pull out like five to ten more Miraculouses. Turns out this thing has side pockets, and there's a bunch more Miraculouses. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so there's just going to be a whole plethora of, uh, of superheroes running around. Which I'm kind of upset that there's more than seven because, like, in my brain, I'm, I'm constantly doing, like, there should be a battle between the Sailor Scouts and the Miraculous group. And I thought, you know, what is it, seven versus nine? I forget how many Sailor Scouts there are, but I thought that was a good matchup. Um, but that's, that, <laughs> that just came out of nowhere for me because they've been showing us seven this whole time. And then, oh, look, secret compartments. Pick one, Marinette, and some of them were miss. I, I think some of them were missing as well. He said he re he misplaced two: the uh, the the moth and the uh, the peacock. The moth and the peacock, which we know where those are. Hawkmoth has them, or at least I think he has the peacock. Either that or he has a replica. Um, but Mar uh, Marinette, <laughs> I was about to call her miraculous. Uh, but hold on, I got so sidetracked. Going back to what I was saying, they have they show that it helps that Marinette and this turtle guy know each other's identities. So all the them constantly telling that it's bad for anyone to know your secret identity. Somebody else could find out. That's not doing what they're telling. That that's not going with what they're showing. Jeez, I can't talk today. That is not going with what they're showing, and. Uh, I think the only time they came even close to showing that in the show was during the uh, the Nadia Shamak episode. I can't remember what her villain name was, but where Tiki told Marinette, you have to keep your identity a secret. And then later, they, Nadia went after all the fans of Ladybug, including Chloe, who said she was a personal friend. Like, that was kind of showing that, but they didn't lean into it enough for it to be proper demonstration. And it, it really takes me off because that is a that is a very important concept of superhero shows. And I'm a big fan of superhero stuff. The secret identity is something you need to firmly establish, and they don't. They just think they're superheroes because they're superheroes. They need a secret identity, otherwise, it's going to be dangerous. They're the villain will come after them personally, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <sighs> okay, so 
Marinette goes to the turtle guy and he says you need to find somebody who you trust to give a miraculous to. He lets her choose the miraculous. She reaches for the bee, you know, foreshadowing the whole Chloe thing, which I pretty much know now Chloe's going to be a... a I mean, I always knew. She looks like a bug. Chloe looks like a bug. I, I always just emphasize the yellow jacket and the stripes. Like, I... It, when I was making the first review, I, I noticed the glasses look like bug eyes. Her tail looks like, a, her ponytail looks like a stinger. She looks like a bug. Chloe's going to be a, uh, the bee miraculous. Uh, but uh, she reaches for the bee miraculous, hesitates, and grabs the fox one. And he says, you have to choose someone you can trust. Which is kind of interesting because the fox miraculous is the um, illusion miraculous. So... You know, it, you'd think it'd be somebody who's more deceptive rather than someone you can trust. Uh, but Marinette, of course, goes to Alia. And I'm like, yes, yes, finally, the real Volpina. Yes, yes, this is what we need. <laughs> and she, she hands her the miraculous. She says, you have to give it back. Why? <laughs> Why does she have to give it back? No, no, you need more help. You are not solving the Hawk Moth problem. He's still on a rampage. Like, you're supposed to be getting closer, you know, discovering more, what more powers your Miraculous have, but you, you really haven't. Like, why does she have to give it back? And it's because the old, the old man is like, I took a huge risk giving out Miraculouses in the first place. And yeah, I think he did, because by giving them out... Hawk Moth knows <clears throat> the Miraculouses are in the city, but you, sh you shouldn't have did that in the first place. Like, if you're gonna make, uh, if you're gonna make Alia give back her Miraculous, Marinette and Adrian should have gave back theirs, because they're the reason Hawk Moth does this in the first place. If they just didn't respond to that first attack, Hawk Moth would have stopped. Hawk Moth only does this because Ladybug and Cat Noir are there. That's the only reason he does this. Yeah, some people would have gotten hurt. Yes, absolutely. But in the long run, it would have been only been one incident. And less people would have gotten hurt. Like, you wouldn't have all these supervillains stomping around. So, I'm not going with that. With You need to return the miraculous when you're done. Because Hawk Moth will be more suspicious. Which, just by simply her... They show this. They show this at the end of the episode. I was trying to wait for it. Uh, but they show this just by Alia's superhero being there, Hawk Moth already knows. Like, the only thing you've done is you've shown Hawk Moth that there are more Miraculouses, and then you've taken it away from the person who can use it. Okay, I'm jumping around a bit, and I, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> Marinette, or Ladybug, gives Alia the, uh, the Fox Miraculous, and... Um, a Kwame comes out. I don't remember the Kwame's name, and I'm upset because I, I do like the Kwame. She's, she's got a nice sassy attitude, which goes well with Alia's sassy attitude. You know, usually I prefer foils, but I think, like, Ladybug and Marinette, I like their relationship. Um, the Turtles, I like his relationship with his Kwame, and I like Alia's relationship with hers. Like, they both, they both relate on a very similar level. Adrian and Cat Adrian and Plague's relationship I do like, but they uh they don't have the same type of relationship chemistry that the other ones have. So she uh she puts on the necklace and her her uh battle cry password is let's pounce. I don't like that. <laughs> no. No, I don't like that. It should have been uh, tail up or something like that. You know, because the other the other people, they say parts of their costumes, which is also part of the animal they are, um, they, they, they tell that to reveal itself. So, you know, Ladybug is spots on. Cat Noir is claws out. Uh, Hawk Moth is Dark Wings Rise, which it should just be Wings Rise. I hate that it's Dark Wings Rise, but they really want to emphasize that he's evil. It should just be wings rise, you know, two syllables. Very easy to say. And hers should have been like tail up or ears up or something like that. Um, but no, in, instead it's let's pounce. I, I don't like that, no. I mean, it, it, it's, it works on a, um, ah, I can't, I can't think of the word, but on a word level. Like, it's still two words and it's still basically saying let's get into action. But I just preferred the whole body part 
uh, revealing itself. Like, I like that as a theme. Um, and it turns, and she chooses her own name. She says, hey, I look just like, uh, I look just like Lyra. Was that her name? Lyra? I look just like Lyra when she became Volpina. And she chooses her own name when she meets Cat Noir. Her name is Rena Rouge. Now, it still works with the syllable thing. Ladybug, Cat Noir, Rena Rouge, Volpina. You know, it still works, uh, which is one of the reasons I'm hoping uh, Chloe becomes Honeycomb. Um, I liked Volpina better, though. And that's because I like the name Volpina more because I know the origins of Volpine. You know, it means fox. Uh, but I, I'm guessing, I don't know about Rena, but Rouge usually means like deceptive and whatnot. So, you know, that makes sense to the whole fox miraculous thing. Um, and they, she team, so she teams up with Cat Noir and Ladybug. And their plan is they these Zappities, they want to go to a theme park. Oh, First, before I get into that, Cat Noir says, oh, so who are you really under that? And she says, I'm not supposed to tell you. He says, good job. I'm like, what is, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Good job, Cat Noir. You're the one constantly saying you want to to tell or you want to know who Ladybug really is. Uh, but that's that's more of a nitpick than the other things I have. But yeah, their plan is they, they're going to trap the Zappities and they come up with an interesting plan. Um, I like how they use the Lucky Charm. Again, I, I say this all the time. Um, I like how they use it, even though it's still a writer's convenience. Um, I would, I would just prefer if, if it's creative enough, I can ignore the problems I have with it. I still have the problems, but if it's creative enough, then fine. Um, I would just prefer if it was more. They foreshadowed it, like they used something that they saw in the episode prior to. But Rena Rouge does her special power. She reveals it. She blows on the flute and then she can create one illusion. Unlike Volpina who can create a bunch of illusions, but that makes sense because Volpina was being powered by Hawk Moth. She can make one illusion and then her her fox thing starts to uh starts to turn off. Which by the way, I'm pretty sure they're selling toys of these things. If I was to get a miraculous, it would be the fox one. That one looks the best. I'm just saying <laughs> I like the fox one the best. That one looks really cool. Um, um, oh, one thing I, I forgot to mention. Alia says, I look li just like uh, Volpina. You know, I, I mentioned that before. She says, I look just like Volpina. So I'm thinking, oh, is Cat Noir going to mistake her for Volpina? Because these people, when you put on a superhero disguise, they for some reason can't tell it the difference. But Cat Noir doesn't recognize her. He's like, oh, a new superhero. Who is your friend? It's like, don't you, shouldn't you be thinking that's Volpina? Since she said she looks just like Volpina and we've established that when people, even if they look completely different, put on the same superhero outfit, they look just like the other superhero. Consistency. Again, just out the window. <laughs> they, they're really bad with consistency with, with these superhero disguises. So anyway, going back to what I was saying, they create a trap for the Zappities, which gets all the hats, and Cat Noir destroys them all at once, so they don't have to worry about figuring out which hat is the real one. So Ladybug comes, and she says, Thank you, Rena Rouge. I'll take back that miraculous now. Rena Rouge... Being a superhero fanatic is like, come on, I can help you more. And Ladybug's like, you promised that you would give it back. And I'm thinking, okay, I this is the same issue I have with Adrian in, in the other episode. I think it's more realistic to her character to want to keep it. But I think Alia is a trustworthy enough person that she would have given it back after giving, giving her word. And they go that route. Like, I'm not mad at the episode because they, they do go that route. She really wants to keep it. And then when she turns back to Alia, her uh, her Kwame uh, tells her, um, don't worry, don't worry about Ladybug because she's right. You are worthy of that miraculous. You are. Um, so she said she lists a couple of descriptions and then she says, you're also trustworthy. And I'm like, OK, if the Kwame thinks she's worthy who is anyone else to judge whether or not she's she's not worthy? Especially Ladybug. Like, okay, let me calm down. This is the issue I, I have with Ladybug as a whole. The show tries to establish her as this leader figure. Um, kind of like how Sailor Moon did with Sailor Moon. Um, and it, 
it doesn't work because the show makes us assume certain things. It makes us assume that Ladybug would know best about who gets to keep the miraculous. Like, <sighs> really, it's the master's job. Again, I don't know his name, the turtle guy. It's his job to decide these things. But even him, I don't trust that he knows what he's doing most of all. Like, he just said he took a huge risk by revealing certain miraculouses. Uh, but yeah, after hearing her, Kwame tell her that she's trustworthy, Alia comes to this, she's like, okay, yeah, I did give my word to give this back. And so she does give it back. Uh, <clears throat> she just puts it down. I, I like how they did it. Like, she opens the door. She knows that Ladybug is not Ladybug, but she just puts it on the on the ground, showcasing that she can have it. And th that's when Hawkmaw says, well, my plan may have failed, but now I know there are more miraculouses in the city. And I'm like, wait, wait a second. Does, does Hawkmoth not know which miraculouses there are? Like, which would kind of make sense. But, like, I figured Nuru would tell him everything because he keeps demanding information from Nuru. So I figured Nuru, like, Nuru told him about the ladybug and the cat. So it's like... He, and he's got the butterfly, or the butterfly, the peacock sitting in his safe. Like, does he not know the peacock is a miraculous? Maybe that's not the real, like I said, maybe it's just a duplicate. Because they, they have shown they can duplicate them. Um, but, I don't know, that that just felt weird to me that he was like, Ah, there are more miraculouses, and they are in the city. And I don't know, that, that felt off. So, Marinette uh, comes back to Alia's place. Um, and Alia is like, you'll never guess what happened to me. And Marinette's like, what? And Alia hesitates. She says, uh, and she doesn't tell Marinette that she was Rena Rouge because she promised Ladybug that she wouldn't. Now, here's a huge issue. Another one that I have with this episode. It's supposed to be trying to establish like, oh, Alia understands now. She understands the pressure that, um... Uh, Marinette has to go through in keeping her secret identity. The problem is, at the beginning, Marinette said she needs the secret identity to protect the people she cares about. This episode was literally about Alia's, the people Alia cares about being targeted, and that's not why she has to keep a secret identity. The reason she's keeping a secret identity is because Ladybug told her to. That's the only reason. Otherwise, she would be telling Marinette. She would be teaming up with Ladybug and Cat Noir more often. Like, that's what I have with, that's the huge issue I have with this episode, is that it tries to instill this moral philosophy within the episode, but what it's telling does not at all match up with what it's showing. The only reason Alia did not keep that miraculous, the only reason she doesn't tell Marinette that she's Rena Rouge is because Ladybug told her to. She's just listening to Ladybug. And Ladybug herself has flawed logic because everything that's being showed is that knowing each other's secret identities would help. You cannot use the, the cliche stereotype of superheroes that knowing secret identities would make things worse. Everything is showing the opposite. And that's that's the huge problem I have with this episode. Like, I like that Rita Rouge is finally revealed. I really do. I've been waiting forever for that. But, oh, that's another thing. That is another thing. They reveal Rita Rouge and then take her away immediately. Why? Because they don't want you to get used to her. They want you to drool over the fact that there's another superhero. But you still got to wait a little bit. It's so manipulative. I'm getting really loud. But it's so manipulative. And it, it annoys the mess out of me, man. Because they could just tell a good story. But instead, they want to try to manipulate emotions to get you to feel certain ways. And yeah, that's what storytelling is but they're not going the proper routes to do it they're just they're just trying to manipulate you they're not tr telling a good story that manipulates you and it annoys the mess out of me as a superhero fanatic as somebody who likes uh cartoons and, and all that it annoys the mess out of me because this show has so much potential it has so much potential to be such a good show and they just keep trying to take these shortcuts that make it all not work <sighs> so yeah, that's the episode. Um, it was it was a fun watch. It was fun seeing Rena Rouge get out, but they messed up in so many places that I just I can't give it the pass. 
Um, <laughs> uh, I just, I can't give it the pass that, that it deserves. But uh, I, at least I was able to get that out of me. Uh, <laughs> to get all that out. Because, yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be fun from here on out. Um, I have seen a couple more spoilers. I try to stay away from them, but uh, I, <laughs> I've subscribed to the YouTube subreddit, and there are spoilers all like, I don't even go there. Reddit, it's just like, hey, look at this spoiler from <laughs> season two that you haven't seen yet. And I hear season three is out. It's it's not out on Netflix, which is what I watched on, but I hear it's out. So, so you know, there's spoilers all around. So I, I've seen certain spoilers Um but, uh, yeah. Um, and I've also, some people have been tempted to spoil me in the comments. Um, obviously there are gonna be trolls who do it anyway, but, um, if you're, if you're not a troll, just know that I tend to be one episode ahead of what you guys are watching, and I would appreciate not spoiling beyond that. Um, I just don't wanna be spoiled, because it makes these, these videos better. Again, there are gonna be trolls, but what are you gonna do, you know? Anyway, I told myself I couldn't eat cookies until I recorded this episode. That is done now. So, I will see you guys next time for the next episode rundown. <clears throat> this this one was a doozy, jeez. This has been Shitty Directs. So long, farewell, I'd be to say goodbye.